So we just showed that we can do any function with our circuit, but we need to pick which one. So rather than being forced to pick one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a circuit such that I don't have to pick. So in order to implement my hardware, I need to pick a function because I don't want to be nailed down. I'm a free spirit and want to be able to roam with my whims. I'm going to pick some circuit that allows me to do every circuit. I can do any circuit at all that I might want, so why not pick to implement the function that allows me to implement every function of a certain size? So that's what we're going to do next. So we can compute any in-bit function using circuits or straight-line programs. What we want is we want a machine that can compute every in-bit function. So the way that we're going to do this, in order to have really, really general hardware, the way we're going to do this is we want to define a function that's going to simulate other programs. That is, I want to have a program where if I hand you a program of a certain number of inputs, outputs, and lines, you're going to be able to tell me what that program is going to output for a particular input. Yes. So any says every option is available to us. We have to pick one. The one I'm going to pick is one that allows me to do every function I hand to it. So what I mean by this is I'm going to define a function that simulates other programs. So by doing this, since I could write any of these functions as a program, that one circuit can do every program. So I can do every function I had in mind. Keeping in mind, the program that I write is going to have to be a little bit bigger than the program that I simulate. Give an idea for how we might do this. Let's actually look at how programs get run on your computer a little bit. So what actually is your computer doing when you run a program? Basically, what your computer does is it's going to have some table that represents all of the variables. Typically, you hear it referred to as like the stack or the heap or something like that. You've got some memory that your computer has that keeps track of all of the variables and their values. And then as you execute your code kind of line by line in sequence, your computer updates the values of all of those variables as your instructions dictate. So you execute your code. While executing your code, you update the values in the table until eventually when you're done, one of those values in your memory is what you end up returning. At a super high level, this is what your computer does when it runs a program. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to write a NAND straight line program that is basically going to do that same thing. So first of all, let's look at an example of what your computer is going to do. So let's say that I have this program for XOR. I've got a NAND straight line program for XOR. What the computer needs to have is it needs to have this table where it's got every variable in the table. So in this case, we have one, two, three, four, five, and then we're going to say the return is the sixth variable here. What are our variables? We have A, B, U, V, W, and return. And as we execute our program, we're just going to assign these, each of these variables the value that it needs. For instance, if I run this input on, let's say, 0, 1, we start out with A and B being defined, because those were my input variables. And then the next thing we do is we figure out what should the value of U be. Well, U is the NAND of A with B. So A NAND B, that is 1. And then the next thing we do is we figure out V. What is V? Well, V is the NAND of A with U. So that's 0 NAND 1, which should be 1. And then what is W? Well, W is B NAND U. So what is that? Well, that's 1 NAND 1, which is 0. And then we're going to return V NAND W, which 1 NAND 0 is 1. So our return value is 1. So this is essentially what your computer is going to do while it's doing XOR, this implementation of XOR. If we can figure out a way to represent our program as a bit string, and we can figure out a way to do this table updating thing with just NANDs, then we can simulate any program at all. So this procedure that I just described, we're actually going to be able to write a NAND straight line program that does the same thing as that procedure. For every single line in the program, we sort of update the value in that memory. And we're going to see that we can simulate that program. So the first thing that we're going to need to do in order to actually simulate our program is to figure out how we can represent our program 
as bits. We're going to define this function that I'm going to call eval. We're going to hand it a description of a circuit or a description of a program and an input, and it's going to evaluate that program for that input. It's going to do the same thing that that program did on that input. Eval is going to be parameterized based on the size of the program. We're going to have a different eval function depending on how big the program is that we're going to try to simulate. And we're going to be handing it the program as the input. We can only do programs up to a certain size is the issue here. So in this case, essentially what eval is going to be doing is we're going to give it as input a string representing a program plus the input values. And its output is going to be the result of running the represented program, the program we represented with those bits, on that input. We hand it the program and the input, and it gives us what that program would return on that input. So this S represents the program size. We're going to show that no matter what your program length is, we can find a function that's going to work for that. We need the number of inputs. So this eval function is only going to work if you have the proper number of inputs. We're going to say something like, this is the eval function that will simulate any 27-line program that's got eight input bits or something like that. And then we're also going to need the outputs here. So we're going to be defining a function, this function eval, or if we said we had eval 27, 8, 4, or something like that, this is a function where no matter what program I give this function as input, so long as it is 27 lines long, has 8 inputs and 4 outputs, that eval function is going to be able to simulate the behavior of that program is what we're going to do. So next class, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the details of this eval function. We're going to talk about how this could work, uh, how it is that we can represent programs as bits, and exactly all the pieces for how we can do this table simulation.